there, friend. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today? Well, it's a good day here in Central Florida, and uh, really, any day is good. It just depends on your outlook, right? The Bible kind of addresses that. This is the day that the Lord has made. What He makes is good. We have a program today, and we've done uh, a couple thousand programs that... Um, It'll just move to the top of really great programs. My guest today is Mr. Barry Torman and his daughter Casey. And uh, we're going to talk about the Casey Project, which deals with cookies. And this project is so important because it takes people who are very limited, sometimes mentally and physically, and it gives them a job, a good paying job. It gives them a routine. And it's an idea I hope would catch on in places all around the country. You're going to be thrilled. And then uh, Casey's going to join us, a wonderful, wonderful young lady. I'm so thankful that she has come into my life. Um, her inspiration is unending, so this is going to be a great show. If you ever have the opportunity to meet Casey, you just can't help but smile, and your life will be much richer when you walk away. Casey loves gospel music, and she goes to the Holy Land experience any time someone will take her. Some would say that Casey was born with certain limitations, but when you're around her, they're not at all that noticeable. To have something as delightful as a cookie company named for Casey somehow seems normal. To watch the Casey Project, a 501c3 not-for-profit enterprise, is to observe a combination of capitalism and ingenuity combined. This special business model offers employment, independence, and the improvement of the quality of life for developmentally and physically disabled adults through training and employment. When Preston Rich and I arrived at the bakery, the workday was just beginning. We were about to witness a streamlined business model second to none. Maurice, also known as Mo, had just finished mopping the floor while Teresa began the first step to create fresh cookies for the pending orders. She knew the exact measurement for each batch and it was obvious she took pride in her work. By the time Casey arrived, smiling, always smiling, she took her place in the lineup to roll the dough into round balls ready for baking. Each cookie is perfectly formed and weighed for continuity. The cookies were then refrigerated for a time and then placed on baking sheets ready for the oven. While the cookies baked, individual packages were prepared for each cookie, guaranteeing its freshness. You just won't find a finer gift than Casey's Cookies. This unique business offers an extensive variety of gift containers for any occasion. The Casey Project presents an unlimited opportunity to churches, civic groups, and businesses to be a part of a wonderful ministry. To receive delicious cookies made with such care and devotion and gift wrapped to perfection just might put a smile on your face, a smile like Casey's. All right, and I would like you to meet, uh, I guess, the force behind this uh, wonderful project, Mr. Barry Torman, and you are proud father, Casey. I am. A lot to be proud of there. <laughs> Absolutely, and yeah. thank you for having us here today. Well, I hope to inspire people to uh, use this mission. Uh, there's many ways they could, and uh, just right down the pecking line, people are helped. A lot of people are helped. Uh, Casey was born with, it's called Golden Har Syndrome. <clears throat> it is. It's a, it's a combination <clears throat> mostly of physical defects. Um, Casey was born with a severe scoliosis and a kyphosis, uh, so her spine kind of looked like a pretzel. And she was born severely hearing impaired. She's profoundly deaf in one ear and severely deaf in the other. Uh, she was uh, born with a number of uh, problems with her hips as well. And, uh, and some other odds and ends. <laughs> and, uh, but she was also, in Golden Har, about 15% of the, of the cases also have uh, 
uh, are born brain injured, and Casey, unfortunately, was, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, was one of those. Uh, I can only imagine the uh, maybe despair in the beginning, and then at this end of the spectrum, she brings incredible joy. And um, she's had nine surgeries, I think, mm -hmm. and always, always smiling, always, always. You know, I think, I think what's true is that uh, God, you know, brings these things together for a reason. You know, when, when Casey was first born, my wife and I, our, our first daughter was perfect, you know, uh -huh. I mean, absolutely perfect. And we thought, you know, the second daughter would be the same. And when Casey was born and we discovered all of these different problems, <clears throat> you know, at first you ask, you know, why? Why would this happen? And uh, over time, we've come to understand that this was all part of God's plan. I know I've uh, told a few people around here I would nominate you for Father of the Year if, uh, <laughs> because what you've taken and, and uh, done and helped other people with the Casey Project. And I, I'd like to get that website on the screen and we'll just leave it up for the rest of the program so that um, people will understand uh, and they can go there and take a look. And I would like to see people take such advantage of this churches, I mean, if you send out a gift basket or anything like that to tap into this ministry that helps people who are limited and, and wouldn't probably ever qualify for a, a job in, in just the regular mainstream of uh, businesses. Uh, but um, the people working, and we showed them, uh, there's probably a much lesser IQ. Yes, that's correct. And, but they come every day, they know their job, and this is what really thrills me about this. You paid them minimum wage yes, when we do. you could, could get by giving them a quarter an hour. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> a lot of workshops do that, but you know, we wanted to be different. Uh, we, we wanted this to improve the quality of life for disabled adults. We wanted them to be able to wake up every morning, get excited about where they're going to go, what they're going to do, who they're going to get to hang out with. And we wanted them to have a paycheck at the end of the week. I know. I just wonder uh, what, what that felt like for them to uh, have their own money. You know, they've earned it. You know, I think it's, uh, it, you know, as with everybody, you know, whether you're, whether you're brain injured or not, you know, when you have your own money, you, you, you have that, uh, you know, that, uh, that sense about you that you, uh, you know, you've accomplished something. And, we and love payday. Yeah, exactly. It's a payday. And, and so I think their, their self-worth goes up and they, 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 uh, they enjoy life more. Um, how, how did you come up with this idea? You, you wanted to make her productive because uh, she would be happy sitting in a corner. You told me something and Preston, my director, was uh, with so we've talked about it since, that she's never been angry. She's never experienced or demonstrated a day of anger in her entire life. You know, she's, she can experience frustration, uh, she can be impatient, but we have never, ever seen Casey get angry. I mean, you know, you, you say to yourself, okay, if this is what brain injury is, <laughs> you know, uh, if this is what developmental disabilities is about, you know, we should all be this way. I could never tell you how that impacted me when, when, you, when you told me that, and I continue to just try to absorb it. Um, I was telling one of my colleagues, I said, she just didn't, wasn't born with an anger button. That, no. Was, no. that was missing and always, always smiling. Um, but back to my other question, um, how did you get the idea for cookies? Mm. Well, it all began really when my wife and I, uh, who also has played a very important role in the building of Casey's Cookies, uh, we were visiting with Casey's teachers. And um, it was just about, she was about to graduate from Gibbs High. And we had visited with the teachers. And we said to them, so what happens next? What happens after Casey graduates? Now, she got some special diploma. It was diploma. a special diploma program. Uh -huh. It's for, for learning disabilities. And, you know, she was in, a, in learning disabled classes all of her life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we said to our, you know, to these special ed teachers, what happens when she graduates? You know, what's, what's, what is there to look mm -hmm. forward to? And they started describing the various opportunities that exist. And there are very few and far between. Mm -hmm. And we thought to ourselves, you know, this sounds terrible. And then they said, you know what? The vast majority of special needs kids, once they graduate, 
end up spending the rest of their lives at home with their parents until the parents are no longer able to care for them anymore. And then they either go off to be with a sibling or they go into social services. And, you know, even though Casey loves sitting at home and, and watching gospel music mm -hmm. and, you know, listening to her favorite artists, the notion of her doing that for the rest of her life just mm -hmm. seemed unacceptable. You know, you've met Casey. You know what her personality is like. She loves people. Delightful. She, she loves to interact with people. And so we thought, you know, um, this was just not an acceptable proposition. Mm -hmm. This was not a good way for her to spend her life. So my wife and I are partners in a business, a for-profit business. We thought to ourselves, why couldn't we create a business that would employ not only Casey, mm -hmm. but lots of others like Casey? And um, we thought to ourselves, you know, if we put this business in a kitchen, there's almost always a job for, for someone with any disability in a kitchen. So this would be the perfect setting. And when you start, you know, thinking about all the things you could make, you know, Casey's and Cookie's just sort of went together. The alliteration was perfect. Yeah. And so from that, Casey's Cookies was born. We, this past year, we've changed the name to the Casey Project because we want to be able to do more than just cookies. And so Casey's Cookies will continue to exist, mm -hmm. but we may also start to see some other products that are also going to be from this project. I, I just am so impressed that you take these people. I know I get a warm feeling when I see uh, perhaps an adult with Down syndrome bagging groceries. Mm. Uh, it's one of the better things about our nation. It is. I'm always glad to see the, you know, the disabled parking and, and all that um, our nation. I'm, I'm very happy that my tax dollars would go to <laughs> provide that <laughs> parking place and all. And so it's, it's great to know that you have ideas to expand it. What I would like for, <clears throat> I think the Christian community should support their own. And if I've ever seen a God thing, it is this. When we take perhaps what society might say, we're the, the very least of them. Jesus said that also. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you do uh, as unto the least of them and you help them out, you're doing it for Jesus Christ. That's, that's a pretty powerful thought. And that's exactly <laughs> what KC Project is all about. Well, you know, we, we decided to create it. It is, of course, a, a nonprofit. <laughs> but it's a social enterprise. And by doing it this way, what we're hoping to be able to accomplish is to have the sales of the cookies ultimately support the enterprise uh, so that it doesn't have to be dependent on state or federal money or on donations. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we, we do need some donations. Mm -hmm. Right now, currently, it costs about $85,000 a year to run the Casey Project. Uh, at the... Uh, and that's almost almost all of that. I think less than 15% actually goes into administrative. All of that is program expense. It's our renting our commercial kitchen where all the cookies are baked. It's our kitchen supervisor. It's our, you know, the administrative assistant and also the payroll for our participants. So it's about 85000 a year. But at the moment, we're only selling about $25,000 a year in cookies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what our goal is, sure, the donate we need donations to make up the shortfall, but the more cookies we sell, mm -hmm. the more disabled participants we can bring into the kitchen, and ultimately that shortfall starts to diminish, and pretty soon you've got something that can become self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Our real goal, the end game in all of this, is to build a model here in Tampa Bay that can ultimately be replicated elsewhere in the country. Because dis disabilities doesn't exist only here. There yeah. are disabled people everywhere who could benefit from this. And if we can do this right and roll this out through parents of special needs kids elsewhere, uh, as a sort of as a franchise but without the franchise fee, we can change the face of disabilities in America. We can empower these young disabled adults to feel great about themselves, to, mm -hmm. to, to have a higher quality of life, to yeah. have money to be able to afford the things that they want. And, and that is a very exciting prospect. Yeah, no, uh, one of the young girls, I think she was scooping the, the dough, her mother accompanies her, yes, she right? Does. And she kind of helps out, but mm -hmm. uh, she, she certainly sees the value that that girl doesn't just sit at home all day. Yep, she's, uh, that's Leah that you're talking about, and she comes with her mom, Linda, 
we don't we don't require the parents to come once mm -hmm. they're employees mm -hmm. uh, but we do accept volunteers who are disabled to come with their moms uh, or their dads and so that's one way that people sometimes will start in the kitchen and then as, as we have an opening for an actual Casey's employee then certainly we're going to look around our kitchen and those are the folks who might come you know come next in line but Linda just enjoys being a volunteer and so she comes along with her daughter you know it was so well organized I'm not sure people with their full faculties <laughs> could be that well organized uh, they knew what they were doing. They weren't talking to each other. They, they were doing their job uh, very, very businesslike. It ought to open the eyes mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, business people out there. If you've just joined me, I'm speaking with uh, Barry Torman, and he is the, the brainchild, you would say, for Casey's Cookies and the Casey Project. And uh, earlier in the show, we showed you the beautiful uh, gift boxes and so forth that uh, you could order those instead of sending uh, flowers or something else like that. Uh, send those cookies, and, and you're helping. You're helping the disabled to really be mainstreamed, and I think that's uh, just a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, Barry, there's a certain place I get. I had heard about Casey's Cookies at a, con a gospel concert, mm. and that's kind of all I knew. So I get my car washed, and there, right there by the cash register, they have a basket with Casey's cookies and they were a dollar piece so I, I bought one very very good I think I had one with some cranberries or something <laughs> in it and uh, so if Christian businesses could uh, take advantage of that and just get the word out it, and a, help it, yeah it's a great way it's a great way for us to distribute uh, here locally especially um, because people see the cookies they try the cookies they get to love the cookies and then of course you know hopefully they'll end up sending those cookies as gifts mm -hmm. to other people well, I've been telling the folks that Casey is here, so uh, I, w I'd, I would like for her to join us. I want you to meet one of the most charming young women I've ever met in my life. And uh, she teaches all of us, doesn't she? Hi, Casey. Hi there. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, what, what do you like, to, what do, you like um, to do in the kitchen? Well, um, I the decorating, packaging, and I do scooping, and then um, treat the mix of dough. Do you, do you enjoy working there? Yeah. Yeah? And you get a paycheck? Yes. Yeah. What do you spend it on? Um, Anything you want? Anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you enjoy the most, you know, outside of work? Um... What do you like to do at home? I like listening to my guest. I like watching lots of Gaither videos. You like Gaither, Gaither videos? <laughs> yeah, I do too. Um, I listen to a lot of Gaither CDs. I listen to lots of music. And um, I've, I heard someone tell me that you like to go to the Holy Land experience in Holy Orlando. Holy Land, yes. Yeah? <laughs> Casey knows everyone there. She knows all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I heard she'll go anytime somebody <laughs> will take her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never been there. Uh, I'm, so I'm taking my mommy and no, my daddy in November 24th, so that's my mommy's birthday present. And in May, next May, I'm really excited because we're going to Gatling for Tennessee and see the gay that vocal band, gay Thursday. Oh, wow. Concert, so. <laughs> that that's a big one. That yeah. wedding. Yeah, the Gaither Fest. Yeah, yeah um, I understand that that quartet uh, signature sound uh -huh. uh, came out to see Casey's Cookies. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. That must have been something special. Well, do you know? Um, I've known Bill Gaither for quite a long time, and recently I interviewed him and Mark Lowry and uh, David Phelps has a marvelous voice <laughs> and I had a DVD made of those for you oh wonderful so you can add that uh, those are just when I was just talking to him uh, to those gentlemen and um, they are very very nice gentlemen I, I hope sometime you can meet them they I met David Bob one time um, one time we went to Gatlinburg one time yeah um, um, I did a photo shoot with Ernie Hoff in Tucson and he invited us to sing, um, he invited us to sit on stage, 
And then I was telling wow. my daddy that I was I was I was I was dying to meet the tennis singer David Fell. So <laughs> yeah. this was my first time meeting David Fell. Casey's he's very honest. She tells uh, tells Ernie that she really wants to meet David. And well, uh, and he's got <laughs> such a great voice, and he's a nice gentleman. Well, we are about out of time, but I certainly hope that you've caught the the vision of this mission and. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my uh, description such a such a God thing that we're helping people to be mainstreamed, and you can tell without reservation what a blessing Casey is. Uh, just to meet her and to see the project that she's working on, and uh, how God makes no mistakes, and He sent this joyful, joyful person to encourage and inspire all of us. We are out of time, but please join me next time, friend. Remembering. There's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.